What's up, my comic comrades, and welcome to Variant Halloween. As you can see, we're kicking off the spooky season early because we love the spooky season around here. And Villains Month is just around the corner for us. We're kicking it off on October 2nd with the Joker, so be on the lookout for that. Anyway, issue one of Predator vs. Black Panther left us with a massive cliffhanger, which you could see for yourself in our previous episode right here. But thankfully, issue two just dropped and we're about to dive in, so spoilers for issues one and two coming in hot. In issue one, a clan of Predators had invaded Wakanda to retrieve its god metal, aka Vibranium. Because with it, the leader of the Predator clan can overthrow his father and older brother who have always looked down on him. Anyway, towards the end of the issue, the Predators were able to infiltrate Wakanda and even lock Shuri out. She tries to get back in, but the Predators reprogram the force field dome around Wakanda, causing her ship to crash into it, seemingly leading to her death. At the same time, on the ground, the Black Panther and Dora Milaje are being hunted by several Predators who just turned Wakanda into a hunting preserve. But with that short recap out of the way, let's jump into issue two. The the issue starts off inside of Wakanda with Ador Milaje on high alert, knowing something is very wrong. Captions even tell us all comms were down. The last thing Okoye heard from her king was that the Dora Milaje should come to his aid. She did not know what was wrong, but the urgency in his voice scared her, as we see the predators are watching them from the treetops using their cloaking tech to stay hidden. One of the Dora Milaje says, General Okoye, what are we? But Okoye just hushes her as we see her using incredible awareness to assess the area. Captions say she knew everything around her as if her nerves extended into the vines of the jungle. She saw a python curling around the branch. She heard the rusty chirp of the claw frog. She even smelled the burping pockets of the methane. She sensed a bunch of other observations in the space of a few seconds, but it was the lack of a certain sensory detail that narrowed her attention. And that would be the birds in the canopy that were silent. At that moment, a vine from the treetop comes down and took one of Dormelage by her neck. But as they look up, blood just comes dripping down on their heads, with Okoye saying, blunt ends of your spears, up. Fire electrical discharge now. On the next page, we see a predator jumping from the treetops, holding the decapitated head of the Dormelage he just grabbed by the vine. But when the predator lands, they're able to get the upper hand on him, with Okoye stabbing him in the chest, saying whatever that thing is, there are more of them. And then the more of them start shooting from the treetops, killing more Dormelage. The issue then takes us back to Black Panther, who last we saw in issue one was knocked on unconscious by one of the predators and is only alive because of the vibranium weave that protects his head. Captions of the comic tell us T'Challa woke to darkness and the sound of thunder in the distance. It took him a moment to orient his bruised brain. He didn't know he had been struck by several plasma blasts directed at his head. He only knew that he would be dead if not for the panther habit. His memories were solidifying, the cloak presence in the sky, the dead flock of birds. One of the last things he had done before climbing into the jungle canopy to investigate further was hail the Dormelage on the comms. Remembering this, he calls out Okoye as he sets out to find her before ultimately stumbling upon a dead predator putting a face to this new enemy. But also Nala, a dead member of the Dormelage. He finds another Dormelage tied to a tree with a wire mesh, not only bound to the tree, but with its wire steadily tightening, threatening to cut through flesh and bone. Realizing this, Black Panther quickly uses his vibranium claws to cut the mesh, freeing her. Black Panther didn't recognize the species or the technology of this invader, but he knew they could bleed. He knew vibranium was stronger. He then asked the Dormelage he said, Saved, where are they? She replies, they are nowhere, my king, but they are everywhere, as they are hiding in the shadows with their cloaking technology. That right there is what makes the Predators so freaking awesome and terrifying. Okay, jumping back to where we left off in Predator vs. Black Panther issue two, the issue then takes us back to the Wakandan border where we see the crash ship of Shuri. But we also see her emerging from the wreckage, pulling out Majikina, telling him we're all right. But I'm not certain I could say the same of Wakanda. He asks Princess Shuri, what has happened? She says someone on the comms cried out for help, then everything went quiet and we were locked out of the perimeter shield. I'm attempting to access the coding, but it's been overridden by something I don't even recognize. But we see that her attempt to hack back into the system didn't go unnoticed. Nope, one of the predators sees this and sends out a scout to investigate the attempted perimeter breach. Meanwhile, Magikina tells Shuri, perhaps I could help us understand what is happening. All water is connected to the other water. It shares its stories with me, but when he touches the water to see what's going on, he's horrified. Shuri asks him, what do you see? He says, I see the death of Wakanda. Now, if you remember from the last issue, Shuri had worried about the ruin that existed outside of Wakanda, trying to get her brother T'Challa to use Wakanda's resources to help the world. But now, 
now the kingdom was collapsing from the inside. She tells Maggie, something has come for us. A horror I don't recognize. I'll get us back in. I have to. As we see the scout predator arrive at the perimeter and pull Shuri through by the back of the neck. Then back inside of Wakanda, we see Black Panther go head to head with a predator. Captions say the jungle seems suddenly to move. It was as if T'Challa was staring into a reflection of wind blurred water. He recognized what he had suspected before when he sensed a presence moving through the sky. They were facing an enemy outfitted with cloaking technology as we see him use his senses to grab the cloak predator, then kick that mofo right in the face, disabling his cloaking. Captions say he had always thought he would have to protect Wakanda from the United States, Russia, China, all world power, but this threat came from beyond. It was a relief to see that this creature though, outfitted with technology that might surpass even Wakanda's, was still subject to the laws of tooth and claw. Because Black Panther kicked him into the river and we see him become a meal for a crocodile. On the next page, we see the crocodile has the predator by the torso thrashing it around as Black Panther looks on. Captions tell us Black Panther would have preferred to imprison and interrogate this hunter, this warrior, this thing, but the old crocodile might not survive his mercy. And Black Panther was sworn to protect all of Wakanda as he pulls out a vibranium blade and throws it at the predator, delivering a death blow. One of the Dormelage then tells Black Panther, my king, when they attacked, we forgot our training. Everyone scattered. Black Panther tells her, there is no time for regret. We must gather again those of us still alive, as the leader of this predator clan watches above from the treetops. Captions say the Yaucha listened and he watched. The Black Panther quickly disposed of one of his clan warriors, and he had survived three plasma blasts to the head. He was more than a worthy prey. His vibranium weave suit was a trophy beyond imagining. A vibranium spear, the weapon his brother had defeated him with, had started this all. Now he had one, and it barely seemed a prize compared to the arsenal that awaited him. When a hail came through requesting his immediate presence, he abandoned this quarry for another. For now, as we see, he's headed to the Great Mound. Captions continue to say he was too excited by the novelty of the hunt while trying to focus on the reason his clan had come here. Vibranium, god metal, the belly of the mountain was full of it. And greed took hold of him then. He imagined armor, weapons, and warships. He imagined a throne. He imagined his father and brother shamed and bloody. The patient reclamation of his honor was before him. The brief violent pleasure of his hunting could wait as he stumbles upon all the vibranium he could ever want. And just like that, friends, we have Predator vs. Black Panther issue two. This series has been so much fun thus far. I'm loving the fact that the Predators are after vibranium. Specifically, this younger Predator who was always looked down on by his father and brother because like the comic is basically saying, with it, he could become the end-all, be-all Predator. The thing I'm most curious about this story, though, is how they're going to make Black Panther and Wakanda come out on top, especially now that the Predators have found their source of vibranium. Like, how do you combat that? Because they were already having a hard time fighting the Predators before they had vibranium. So how are they going to combat that? I don't know, but the resolution is going to have to come quickly because there's only two more issues left in this miniseries. But either way, I'm loving the ride that Benjamin Percy and team are putting us on. So needless to say, we'll be right back here when issue three drops. But now it's your turn. What do you guys think of this book so far? Are you digging it as much as we are? Let us know down in the comments. Other than that, we will see you next time when we talk about all things comics.